Hi there, and today I'm building the tunnel mouths for my underground station. So if you've watched the previous videos to this one, you'll know that I now have a London underground train. I've got two platforms, but obviously my station now needs some walls. And what I'm going to do today is start by building the two mouths at each end of the platforms where the tube's going to go into the underground. So I've done a bit of studying of London underground stations and how, what they look like and they vary from um, line to line and, and station to station um, but I've based this on sort of a, a mixture of different stations I like the look of um, and this is what it's going to look like. So first of all we've built this um, gap so if you can see this is eight studs I built this so it's only seven studs across meaning that the six stud wide train will only ever be half a stud away from the um, platform edges so that's why this wall needs jumper plates because I need an eight wide uh, an eight stud wide arch here um, but I've only got a seven stud wide gap so first of all I'm going to start off by having a plain row of black bricks on the bottom like that and then we'll get the arch in place early on so we can see where it's going and then build around it and for that I'm using these pieces here which were very popular in the castle theme but I've used them in black today and that is how our mouth is going to be and if we stick a 1x4 plate across the top that joins them together perfectly. Um, also if you watched a previous video where I did my London Underground uh, tube station signs you'll know that I was building my walls using these bricks which are 1x4s they've got studs on the top as normal but they've also got studs on the side and that allows me to tile um, the wall um, in the sort of style of London Underground stations so it's easy to do this side as we've just got some 1x4s there then we're going to start filling in the gaps here then we're going to need a 2x4 and another 1x4 and then we need to do the same on the other side and that takes us to level with the top of the arch now um, the wall of the this the back wall of the station is going to go up and also slightly curve in this way so this wall now can actually afford to be one stud shorter as it gets up to this height so we're going to quickly build that along with some more one by fours um, and then we'll take it to the next stage and that's as high as our station needs to be if we put minifig jez in here you can see that's plenty high enough for him this um, arch is high enough for the tube train to come through and then we've got a couple of extra layers of bricks um, to give it a little bit more height um, but that essentially is what we're doing for the tunnel mouth so what we're going to do now is tile that up with lots and lots of one by two um, tiles um, and we'll take it from there I'm sure you've noticed that I've actually missed out a row of tiles and that's because if you've ever traveled on the London Underground you'll have noticed that each line on the um, underground map is uh, associated by a color um, and each uh, line has a different color and that color is usually used around um, the platforms of that line so you know where you are and what line you're what the platform of what line you're standing on um, they, so I looked at all the different colors and the one that sort of made the most contrast for my set I didn't really care which one it was I just wanted a nice looking color was this lovely dark azure color and that's the closest I could find to the Piccadilly line so I thought well I'll add that in so I've got some dark azure 
tiles to just kind of pop along here to finish off the tiling. I plan that to run around the entire station. Another one by one there. And more one by twos. I'm staggering these in brickwork that's called a Flemish bond, if you ever wanted to know. But it's how the tiles on the walls of underground stations are, so um, you don't have straight joins all the way down. Kind of like when you're building with a Lego bricks, you don't want joins going straight down. You want to stagger them to make it more sturdy. Um, and that just makes it look a lot nicer. So there we go, there's our first tunnel mouth with our coloured line for the Victoria line. And then tiles missed out here for the arch itself. And like I said, this is a seven stud wide gap and then widening to eight studs for the archway. Um, so this will be half a stud inset from the edge. And this one, when the back wall is in, this will all get covered up and then slightly curve over here. So you won't see that sort of messy and unneat edge. So next thing to do is start the other end. So down at the other end of the platform, the tunnel mouth was going to be identical to the first end. Um, when I designed all this in the BrickLink Studio software, I made them the same as each other. But since then, I thought it'd be nice to um, add a little bit of interest to make them slightly different. So I thought I'd put a security door in this end um, for the London Underground staff to go behind the scenes. So first of all, I have got a 1x4x6 door frame and that is going to sit here and then we've got a light bluish grey door to click into that like that and as it's a security door I found one of these one by one tiles with the little keypad on it so that can go on the handle so only London Underground staff can get through the door. Um, also since um, buying those elements, I found uh, this door, which has got a rather cool stick on it, restricted area, authorised minifigures only, ID required. And this is from set 76051, which was Superhero Airport Battle, and that was the airport scene from Captain America Civil War, the one with the um, giant Ant-Man figure, uh, the buildable figure, and this was on the uh, airport sort of control tower. So what I'll do, when I've finished both these ends, I will uh, detach this sticker from here and reapply it to the other door, and then we'll have a nice restricted area sticker on there too. So uh, normally I know exactly what I'm doing as I generally design things in the studio software first, um, but this has thrown a bit of a spanner in the works because I've never um, added it to the uh, software, the uh, model in uh, the software. So I'm gonna get building and uh, hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult. It's just building exactly the same structure as the other end, but effectively building around the door. So there's our first row of plain black bricks, and then of course our one by ones for the tunnel mouth to be added. And oops, that goes on there, which shows our gap is correct. Our eight stud arch with our seven stud gap between. And now I'm just going to build up the wall with the uh, black bricks with the studs on the side as I did the other end. So there's our completed wall um, and I chose white for this door frame just because I thought that's going to be visible and I thought that would look better with the white tiles next to it than choosing the black for the wall or anything else but we'll see how that looks. I can always change that at a later date if I think um, another colour like the dark grey or the black would be a better option. I had white to hand so I added that in, it was nice and easy to do. So next stage, obviously add the tiles like I did the other end.
with the positioning of that door, it's meant that on, I've been tiling these, you can see where the half tiles are meant to go here, you've ended up with two one by ones. I don't actually like the look of that um, too much. So what I think I'm gonna do is off camera, move that door in one stud that way, which will mean we have more full tiles um, and you don't get these two one by ones together like that. Um, or maybe one stud this way and then we have a one by one and a one by two here. I'm not entirely sure which. Um, if when we have our wall here with tiles on them, let's have a quick look with that. Actually no, so if I put that there that would still just about clear these tiles if this was one stud that way it would be very close so I may be better off pushing it one tile uh, one stud towards the tunnel rather than away from the tunnel so I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll come back in a minute with you well in a split second from your point of view a few minutes from my point of view and um, we'll see what it looks like so here we have it with the security door moved one stud to the left and I'm not totally happy with this the way it looks so we've got those two single one by ones again column of ones which look okay but then again same problem here two one by ones on their own doesn't look quite right so what I'm gonna do is again in a split second for you a couple of minutes for me I'm gonna now move it two studs that way so it'll be one stud to the right of its original positioning and see what it looks like that and here we have it moved one stud to the right of its original position, so it's right in the corner, and I am a lot happier with the way this looks, so the tiling looks much better, um, not quite so sort of um, broken up, um, and much more sort of coherent with the rest of the tiling. Um, you may also wonder why I now have a column of one by two plain bricks without any studs on them and that's because I referred back to my original design um, I was building from memory and I suddenly realized that to get this wall in with its um, tiles on it as well um, it's gonna hit uh, the tiles coming out from there so what happens is that sits with one by twos plain bricks and then when this wall comes in like that you can see how the tiles Sort of butt up with each other with no gap and it looks a lot more seamless so i've moved my lights around and here's a much better angle so you can see that corner and how those two walls will then marry up with this one um, being attached um, and just brushing up against those one by two bricks instead of having ones with studs on the side and tiles they just sit on there like that and you can see the door opens quite happily so it doesn't catch on the tiles and I think this is a much better layout so the doors in the corner it's away from the trains you may think that's a better idea not sure if the door should be hinged on this side so it opens out a bit sort of boxed in if I hinged it on this side it would open against the wall that may be a better solution I'll give that a go um, but other than that I think this end wall is finished too so here you can see a wider shot with the complete tunnel mouth and the door in its new position and you can see I have actually turned that around as well so the door now opens this way so it opens against the wall rather than open into the middle of the platform which I think seems more sensible um, and I think that looks a lot better than it did. I'm much more happy with the way these tiles look you get more of the blue stripe here rather than having a bit here and then broken onto the other side as well. Um, obviously when this back wall is done the blue stripe will continue along the back wall but that's for the next video um, but other than that this is done and here's the finished article for today so I've transferred the sticker from that other door onto our grey one here the tolerances of between this train and the tunnel mouth are really really tight on the top it's about a stud on the side well it is a stud on the side because it's eight studs wide the arch and six studs the train it must be less than half a stud maybe a plate or a tile height we test that if we put a tile in there no even less than a tile height between the um, top of the train and the tunnel mouth 
which is really good, looks absolutely perfect there, nice and um, close to the top of the tunnel mouth. And as we said, we've got our half stud gap between the train and the platform edges. So I'm really liking the way this is looking. I've seen it obviously in the uh, digital software, but it's really great to see it in the person. Um, and obviously here's, as always, Minifig Jez waiting to get on his train. He must be having a thirsty day because he's got a can of Buzz Cola there that he's um, having a quick sip from. Wonder where he could have got that from on an underground station. Maybe we'll find out later on. Um, so here we are. If you've liked this video, um, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've really liked it, do give it a subscribe and find out how this station um, goes on. And let me know any comments you have and maybe improvements or anything I could do to um, make this uh, a bit better maybe. Uh, let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video.